with all due respect, Larry Fitzgerald, he was not running the same offense at Oklahoma because the offense at Oklahoma was way better than the offense at Texas Tech. And he has some running backs back there that they just ain't had at Texas Tech. He has some assets, as they say. And everybody wants to point to the offensive line that he had at Oklahoma and the lack of offensive line, if you will, that he would have at Arizona. I would also point to Larry Fitzgerald also, and he's getting up there in age, is becoming a change in the guard or needs to become a change in the guard because I don't know that Larry Fitzgerald can continue to do this. But you do have Hakeem Butler, and you do have Christian Kirk, and you did draft Andy Isabella. And when you go 4 Y with that set, you can have Larry Fitzgerald as your split in and be fine. You can have David Johnson in the backfield and be elite. It's about whether or not that offensive line is going to be able to keep him clean. And we know that offensive line could not keep Josh Rosen clean. And they're going to do some moving and shaking on that front. And they're going to change up the way that they decide to block for Kyler Murray. And as I love this term, Larry Fitzgerald actually got to say that he's got the exit button. <laughs> it's like, And I was like, yeah, all right, cool. I like that. But you don't want to see Kyler Murray hit the exit button. You want to see Kyler Murray throw for 4,000 yards because that's what he does well. What I find interesting, though, is Kyler Murray does know Cliff Kingsbury's offense in the manner that Fitzgerald was speaking toward. But I also think that there's a quarterback who just won the MVP who probably knows the ins and outs of Cliff Kingsbury's offense better than anybody else in the NFL to date. That'd be Pat Mahomes which is why Cliff Kingsbury was a highly sought-after head coaching commodity, let alone uh, commodity. I thought he was going to end up with an offensive coordinator job at Arizona. I didn't think he was going to end up with a head coach job, and then you end up with that. And the next available quarterback that knows your system also has all the tools. You recruited out of high school, try to get him to come to A&M, try to get him to come to Tech, Kyle Murray. So it's a very interesting partnership, and it seems that they, they're going to get along just famously because – Kingsbury got a little Baker Mayfield in him, which is probably why he didn't like watching Baker Mayfield walk away. Probably why he didn't keep it to himself either. Tried tried, tried to hold it in, couldn't hold it in very well. Now I'm going to be really interested to see how much Cliff Kingsbury actually leans on Lincoln Riley to try to help him install things that Kyler does well. How much he listens to Kyler when Kyler says, I like running this or I like running that. And that it all melds together against what is also the best cornerback? In the NFL, in Pat Peterson. And I wonder how many times Kyler Murray is going to actually test Pat Peterson in practice. Because that'll be interesting. Especially since Pat Peterson wanted all but wanted out last year because they were so terrible. And it wasn't like you were giving Vance Joseph a whole lot to work with because you made all these offensive draft picks when everybody's going, maybe you need to get Quentin, uh, Quentin Williams to help you with your defense before you go draft Kyler Murray. Now, Patrick, I know that you've talked about this a lot, but I'm going to ask you again. Do you think it works at Arizona? I don't. I'm going to get to why I don't later. I want it to work, but I don't think it will. Works, I mean, that you know, short term, I, th- I think they're going to struggle next year. Uh, but, you know, may- they'll win some games. They'll have some fun. It'll be fun to watch. Long term, I don't know. I, I, I think Kyler is, is just such a force of nature, uh, talent-wise, that he's going to make it work. It's a lot like what I said about Baker. I didn't care if Baker went to the Browns. It didn't matter. He's he's the type of guy that's going to turn it around. Although Kyler's a different person, this is uh the, the team is the roster that he went to is way worse than the roster that Baker Mayfield went to last year. So it's going to be a struggle. Cliff Kingsbury, how he handles being an NFL head coach, I could see how it might be easier than being a college coach. But obviously, the NFL is a much tougher league, a much different league. So a lot of questions to be answered, but. I think Kyler Murray is, is going to be, a, as long as he stays healthy, fingers crossed, he's going to be an outstanding NFL player. I like it. I think Kyler Murray is going to be great. Mm-hmm. I think the Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury relationship ain't going to last very long. And I say that because I saw the front office that decided that Cliff Kingsbury was the guy. And the guy running the show, Steve Kime. Steve Kime traded up to go get Josh Rosen. Then let Josh Rosen go. That's got to be a hard pill to swallow. Well, it, look, that you goes put, on your you, resume. You pounded the table to trade up for him, and then a year later you're trading him away. And then McCagnan just got fired from the Jets after he signed Le'Veon Bell to a stupid contract, and Adam Gase was all up in arms about it. And then Adam Gase is going, hey, it ain't my fault. Y'all saw what we had. And I'm going, yeah. So who do you think would go first, Cliff Kingsbury or Steve Kime? i got to believe it would be Cliff Kingsbury, and they just hold on to the assets to Kyler Murray. Because the one thing you get to say is, hey, we took a chance. 
wanting to try to keep up with the Joneses. We wanted to modernize our offense. We went to the next available guy who we put in the press release as friends with Sean McVay, which also speaks to incompetence, also speaks to clownish behavior. I don't trust that front office to make any good decisions, man. And I don't trust Cliff Kingsbury to make good decisions because he's never been in this position before. He has zero NFL coaching experience. Think about that. Why why haven't we talked more about that? I know I was. When I was watching the guy that used to have Cliff Kingsbury's job get fired after he'd been on the job for a year. Now that man is the defensive coordinator at Cleveland. I just, I continue to look around. I go, Vance Joseph lost his job. You know, I, I, and then you're going to put Vance Joseph in a bind by not actually giving him the draft to help with. I also get wanting to go get another rookie quarterback because of the way that the collective bargaining agreement is written and the way that the rookie scale works. You want a rookie quarterback or so, or a quarterback on a rookie contract so that you can contend for a Super Bowl. So that you can afford to pay all the other guys around that person. Because as much as Kyler Murray is going to get paid over the next four years, it ain't going to be what Carson Wentz gets paid. It ain't going to be what Dak Prescott gets paid. Which is why... Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. I mean, they they struck while Aaron was hot and then they had to pay him and and they kind of had to turn over the roster. And they're not going to be very good. Joe Flacco. Oh my God. Uh, I'm not even going to pretend that Joe Flacco deserves to be in this conversation. But he did win a Super Bowl. I'm just saying, he they won the Super Bowl. They paid him immediately and had to cut about six guys. Baltimore Ravens quarterbacks have led such a charmed existence. I mean, that's another topic altogether. I I, I continue to look at Baltimore and just say, yo, man, y'all basically changed the offense to a wing T for Lamar Jackson yeah. and made the playoffs mm-hmm. because the defense was that good. Yeah. You know, you, you your running backs... You don't. Most people don't even know who those running backs were. Mm-hmm. Alex Collins didn't know who it, most most I people think didn't he know eventually that eventually got cut. Right. And then uh, who's the guy that the, the, the undrafted guy who came up at the end of the year? Gosh, I can't remember his name. Now they bring in Mark Ingram, who I think is if, if can be a nice player. But but yeah, we'll. Uh, but but that that's kind of what I look at with this team. I think it's cool. I think it's fun what they're doing. I like seeing people trying something different. I don't think it's going to work long term, but it's fun to watch. Well, and that's that's where I'm at with it too. I want to see whether or not the uh, I want to see a Hal Mummy air raid. I didn't want to see. I know a Lincoln Riley air raid worked because I've watched Kansas City win with it. I know they can put up a bunch of points. I want to see a true blue air raid. I want to see Cliff Kingsbury try to call seventy pass attempts in a game. I want to see the Arizona Cardinals drop fifty two and maybe win fifty two to fifty one or lose fifty three to fifty two. Either way. I think I want to see Hal Mummy and Mike Leach just get to gloat and say to the rest of football, you remember when you guys told us that we were idiots for running this offense and I showed you what it could do at Oklahoma by winning an, or a national championship and I showed you what it could do at Texas Tech when we had the, the, the famous win with four verts against Texas? I want to see it borne out. I want to see it true. 